What's up YouTube? I'm making a requested video here today. This one was requested by Jack Farley. He wanted to see my uh, slip joints and my Swiss Army knives. So that's what we're gonna go over here. Uh, I actually tried to make this video already, but I was, <laughs> the re I realized the video that I put up had a lot of errors in it. After I was uh, corrected by a buddy of mine, he was, who was very knowledgeable in slip joints and traditional knives. So rather than keep that one up, I just decided to make a new one. Plus there's a new knife here, and uh, I think I forgot one last time. So, you'll see the top row here, it's all Swiss Army knives, uh, predominantly Victorinox knives. It, with the exception of these two, those are Wangers, which is now owned by Victorinox anyway. Um, and the bottom you'll see uh, slip joints and more traditional knives, and these two, two kind of uh, cheap sodbuster knives. Alright, so... Really, Victoria Knox knives or, or Swiss Army knives—they're kind of in a category of their own because they are—they are slip joints, but they're—they're they're also multi-tools. So very useful, uh, very useful knives for everyday carry. So we'll just jump right into it here with the top left here. Here's your Sack Classic, uh, S A K. <laughs> you got your blade, your nail file. And, uh, nail cleaner and or small flathead screwdriver and of course you got your scissors nice little uh, nice little knife you can put on your keychain or slip in your pocket and really forget it's there and of course you got your toothpick toothpick and tweezers and your key ring which I always find it funny that they add that as a feature or a or or an added uh, tool, I guess it kind of is for people who like lanyards and whatnot. And then here you have uh, a winger nail nail clipping nail clipper model. I'm not really sure what the number or model name is, but it <laughs> the big feature on this one is it has a it has a nail clipper. So that's very cool because that's it's something you really don't usually see on these type of knives or this type of tools. I don't think there is a blade on this one. There are scissors. Slightly different design. Um, other side. Yeah. This one is a this here's your nail cleaner and uh, nail file. And then this I'm not sure if this is a kind of cuticle cuticle pusher or something or a small chisel, but. Yeah, there's no blade on this one, so it is a TSA compliant. Then you have your tweezers and toothpick, and of course your key ring. This one has the Evo grips, I believe they call it. Great little tool for, you could throw this in like your, your travel hygiene bag or, you know, <laughs> toiletry bag. All right, and here we have a nice and thin two-bladed winger. You got your spear point and your small secondary clip point. Nice and thin, very lightweight. This one has aluminum scales. All right. And then we have one of my favorites, Victorian Ox Cadet, in your silver Alox or Alox scales, which just really checkered aluminum. Very cool. Nice and thin, good tool set on this one. You got your main blade, you got your bottle opener and your can opener with your large and small flathead screwdrivers and your wire stripper. I think these tools are present on every Victorian Ox model, could be wrong on that. Again your nail file and your nail cleaner and your key ring. I like this one a lot. Slip this in my fifth pocket, or the chain coin pocket, watch pocket, whatever you want to call it. There you go. I'm going to try to go quickly with these because there's a lot of tools in each one, even though most of you know what, what they got. But this is a uh, Victorian Ox Tinker in the silver tech scales. Uh, kind of clear, translucent, looks very cool. Kind of mechanical looking. Again, you got your main blade, beautiful. You got your bottle opener, can opener, of course. 
And then on this one, you get a secondary blade. And instead of a corkscrew, you have your full-size Phillips screwdriver. It's definitely come in handy for some people. And then you have your awl or leather punch or reamer. Very cool. And of course, your toothpick and tweezers and key ring. <clears throat> okay, over here, another one of my favorites. This is the Victorian Knox Compact in translucent blue. Of course, your blade. Your This one actually has a combo uh, can opener and bottle opener. I haven't tried to open a can with it, but uh, it opens bottles pretty well. And over here, you have your full size scissors. Always can come in handy. Then you have your corkscrew with your small micro, you know, flathead screwdriver. Uh, this actually comes with the compact. It doesn't come with er any, every model with the cork corkscrew, and it comes with the pin. Most models will have that hole for the pin, but they won't have the pin included. So the compact is really cool, and it has the plus scale. So there's a, an added pen next to your tweezers and toothpick. So you could always use a pen. Very cool tool. I like the compact a lot. And I like that it's blue. And here we have the Victorinox Ranger in your classic red. I think this one is uh, one of the biggest you can get before you get to the champ. Maybe there's one or two more steps. Again, I could be wrong on that. But um, you got your main blade here. You got your secondary blade. What else we got on here? We have a full size nail file with three different levels of uh, coarseness, I guess you could say. I'll put it on the side here, kind of a saw like. All right. And then next to that, I believe you have a wood saw. No, haven't really tested this out yet. I'd imagine it works okay, just being a little cumbersome with because it's because of its size. But it's cool that they included full size scissors. And of course your bottle opener and can opener. And on the back here, have your corkscrew. I actually bought this uh, the screwdriver to go in there with the pin. You can buy them in little kits with the with the toothpicks and tweezers. Uh, what else we got in here? Uh, this is kind of like a little chisel. That still has oil on it. <laughs> um, you got your... I really don't know what that is. Another small screwdriver, I guess. And here you have your multi-purpose hook. Or parcel carrying hook, or... I guess it has many different uses. I actually forgot to go over that in this one. This one includes that also. On the compact. But this one has a, a small run of a, a nail file on the back of that. So very cool to include that. It's not present on, um, on this model here since it has a full size nail file uh, in its tool set already. And on the end there, of course, you have your reamer, also covered in oil. You can, you can see I don't really use it that much. So there you go, that's, that's the Victorian Ox Ranger, very cool. Alright, and on the side here you'll see, uh, this is a kissing crane, sodbuster model, in your faux abalone scales, or covers. <clears throat> very nice looking. Uh, quality is not the best. You got your kissing crane shield there. Uh, made in China, I believe. Brass pins. You could, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a small chip in the blade right there. And I realized that happens because right where this pin is, the back spring raises up, obviously, above the pin. 
So every time you close the knife, can you see that? So every time you close the knife, you can actually see a little indent there. That's where the blade hits. So a little bit of a fit and finish issues there, tolerance issue, issues. But you know, ten fifteen dollar knife. You know, it's not. You can't really complain, I guess. <clears throat> Brass liners. Not too bad. You should be able to sharpen it out, but I haven't even bothered. I don't use this all too much. Um, oh, there's actually a crack in the scale too. I didn't notice that. All right, but it's a definitely a cool knife for ten fifteen dollars. Here we have a Baron Baron Sons, I believe, large sodbuster. Very big knife. Uh, would be great in the kitchen. Uh, flat ground, flat ground, yes. Nice large blade there. Uh, quality's not the best on this one either, uh, and this one's made uh, in USA. Yeah, but it'll do the job. Nice large blade. Could probably use sharpening out of the box. Yeah, nice little kind of foldable kitchen knives here. <clears throat> Alright, here we get into one of my slip joints. This is a Camillus. What a knife. I'm not sure of the model name or if that is the model name. But you got your stainless stainless steel kind of covers here. With these little this little dimer <laughs> what the hell did I just say? Diamond pattern. <laughs> this one's kind of uh, old. I guess you would call it vintage. Nice little clip point blade there. Made in New York. Very cool. And this one has a bottle opener on it. Also very useful. And I guess you could use that as a screwdriver if need be. Very small, very cool kind of Barlow pattern. Here you have a Cold Steel Lucky. And there's something funky going on with these scales. I don't know if it was present when I got it, but there's kind of, I guess, the, are those voids in the carbon fiber? They're all over the place. Unfortunate, but uh, the knife still works, so. Let me know if anyone else has had that problem with their Cold Steel Lucky. But this one's very cool. Two blades on this one. You got screws. Adjustable screws instead of pins. Something outside of Cold Steel's realm. You got Lucky on one side, and uh, made in Italy. This one, very cool. CTS XHP, great steel. You got your plain edge blade, and then your fully serrated blade. So something, something for everyone on this knife, and it comes with a pocket clip. Very cool, kind of like a brush finish on the flats, and then satin. Satin grinds. Very cool knife here. Sorry for the focus issues. I guess it's a busy background. And... But yeah, I enjoy that knife a lot. And I like that it has a pocket clip. Here's a Fantoni Dweller. I love this knife. Great action. Kind of modified sheep's foot or one clip blade. Made in Italy again, this one. This is a Sandvik steel on this one, 19C27 Dweller. This one has canvas micarta, uh, I guess scales you would call them, because we have screws instead of pins again. Um, brass liners, kind of a finger guard here, very comfortable to hold, generous handle. Yeah, I like this one quite a bit. Nice, nice positive half stop. This one actually came with a, a sheath here. You see Fantoni Italy. Uh, nice and soft leather sheath. Uh, because of these scales are so grippy, um, it's hard to get in and out. I guess as you use it more, it'll get easier and easier, but they do offer the same knife in a variety of uh, wooden scales, so. Maybe I'll pick one of those up next, but very cool knife. I like that a lot. Here we have a Northfield unexcelled number 47 or Viper in your lava acrylic covers, brass pins, nice shield, wicked Warncliffe blade. You see the um, 
the logo there, Northfield. The stamp, made in USA. I forget what this, um, the three lines in the bolster, or I think there's a name for it, but it's kind of more of a dress, it makes it look more dressy. Very cool, nice half stop on here. Produced by GEC, slightly off centered. Great knife here, sway back design. Works good in this, uh, the draw cut grip. Very cool. I enjoy that one a lot. Here we have a Northwoods Indian River Jack. Brass pins. Brass liners. I think nickel silver bolsters. Could be wrong on that. This one's in uh, CPM 154. Nice modern steel on a traditional knife. Very cool. Very strong uh, spring on this one, which I prefer actually. You see that snap there. It talks to you. And here we have the um, the arrowhead shield there. That was one of the corrections uh, my friend made. I forget what I called it, but it was <laughs> something else. Yeah, I like this knife a lot actually. Um, Blue camel bone covers, but after getting this one, they kind of look more like green. I don't know if these these colors change as you use the knife, but either way, I still love the color and I still love this knife. Uh, came with as with most, I think all Northwoods knives will come with your pocket slip here. Knives, knife, knives ship free. Very cool. Just tuck them right in there, and they're not gonna fall out on you unless you. You squeeze, you squeeze the two ends together, kind of opens it up a little bit. Very cool idea. You slip this right in your pocket so your knife's not, you know, rattling around in there if you have keys in your pocket or something else. Very cool knife there. Alright, here you have your Northwoods Everyday Barlow. Very cool kind of extended bolster there with your Northwoods uh, stamp. Beautiful blue camel bone covers. They are flattened here and then chamfered on the sides. Very cool. Brass liners again. Long pull. Again, CPM 154. That's one of the reasons um, these, these, these two over here are produced by, um, what is it, Queen Cutlery? And they're the only ones who will work with modern steels. Uh, some people complain that the quality is not the same as uh, you know you would get with a Great Eastern Cutlery, but it's still sufficient, I believe. I like the look of the look of this knife a lot. I think it's gorgeous with that clip point blade. Overall, very nice. I like the size. Haven't used it too much yet. It's still fairly new, but very nice knife. Good stuff from Northwoods. And here we have a uh, Titty Ute Cutlery produced by GEC Beer Scout Knife with your kind of easy open notch there. BS on the blade. No, not bullshit. That's Beer Scout. <laughs> Titty Ute Cutlery. Very cool. Warren Cliff or Sheep's Foot Blade with your long pull. I like this knife a lot. You got, of course, you got your bottle opener on here. Couldn't be called Beer Scout without one. Works very well. Again, you probably could use that as a um, screwdriver if need be. Nice bolsters here. You got your kind of key loop or lanyard loop. Very cool. Again, brass liners and cabin ebony uh, scales there or covers like that one a lot so there you go that's my those are my um my swiss army knives and my uh, slope joint knives i hope you enjoyed the video and as always guys i'll see you i'll leave links in the description if i can and i'll see you guys on the next one take it easy everybody